Welcome to the Pass the Game Challenge. Six developers make a video game without any communication between them being allowed. This time around, they also had a theme, horror. The first dev gets four hours to start the project, then passes it on to the next, who gets five, with each dev getting a little more time than the last to make up for time spent debugging code and coming up with ideas. Will we be able to create an engaging and blood-curdling video game? Let's find out, starting with developer number one, Liam. So I started off creating a simple player control script. Now I wanted this player to yield a flashlight, so I made a system where we could control the radius of the flashlight's vision, and I only wanted certain objects to be rendered if they were inside of this cone of vision. So the idea was that I only wanted enemies to be rendered if they were inside of the flashlight's vision. I wanted this game to be about insanity. The more the player sees enemies within his flashlight, the more he should become insane. I then spent the rest of my time adding cool sound effects to the game, so I added a cool ambient soundtrack, a heartbeat sound effect, some footsteps, and a crackling door. Yeah, okay. Guys, I don't have a lot of time. My name's Kyle Banks. I'm a game developer. I make, make devlogs, but that's not important right now. Someone, someone just showed up here. Uh, they call themselves the Blackthorn Prod. I don't know what that means, but they, they had like a USB stick and they were like, you have five hours to make this game better. Um, and it like, it better be scary. I'm going to get to work, but I'll check back in, in a bit and let you know. So far, I'm really liking the audio and the whole idea of sanity. So I immediately leaned into those. I created a second version of the heartbeat with the volume cranked up just to the point where it starts clipping. As you lose sanity, the audio shifts with the louder heartbeat and the ambience, taking over from the softer piano and the lighter heartbeat. I wanted to go further with the atmosphere changing as sanity decreases, so I wrote a shader for the field of view that has a pulsing heartbeat-like effect to go with the audio, and I also added some harsh and greedy post-processing that intensifies as you lose sanity. Admittedly, I did spend more time on this than I should have, and we need to get some gameplay going, so I added a health pickup to restore some sanity, and started a simple spawn script to randomly spawn enemies in health. Health pickups turned out to be pretty boring though, so I removed them and made it so you consume visible enemies to restore health with a long cooldown. I also made the field of view expand to 360 degrees as you lose sanity, and added a small sanity decay even when no enemies are visible, so you're forced to go searching. It's starting to become this nice balance of having to move around to find enemies, don't look at them too long, and consume as many as you can when your cooldown is up. I had a little bit of time left, so I added a timer to show how long you've survived, and a game over sequence when your sanity hits zero. With that, the 5 hours are up. I'm happy with the changes I made, though in retrospect, I do wish I spent more time on gameplay over effects. Anyways, it's time to return the USB stick, and I hope they're satisfied with my changes. Before we move on to the next developers, we wanted to let you know that if you've also dreamed of making games, then we are currently building a course called the Game Dev Rockets. It will teach you how to go from zero skills actually selling your games and earning money. You can learn more about it with the link in the description. Hey, I'm Kodir. I make devlogs on YouTube. Most of my projects are colorful 3D games, so when I checked out the game for the first time, I knew I was in for a challenge. To start, I moved some editor scripts to an editor folder so the game actually builds and I put the field of view code in late update to make it more accurate. I didn't really understand the goal of the game yet, so I first focused on some technical stuff. I made some changes to the UI and added a basic start and end screen. I also changed the consume indicator to include the timer. Currently the only way to regain sanity was to consume enemies, so I added a sanity pack that players can pick up to refill their sanity. Next I gave the spawner an overhaul to give each element a custom spawn interval and made the sanity packs spawn less often than the enemies. To add some juice to the game I decided to also implement a simple skill effect when enemies become visible. I then wanted to add some screen shake and accidentally found that increasing screen shake based on the sanity level makes for a cool effect. At this point I was already running out of time so I quickly made a list of stuff that I still wanted to add. I figured the circle where players can rest for a bit would make the game more interesting, so I added a blue area that protects your sanity even if enemies are in range. The circle does disappear after a while to make sure you can't just stand in the circle for the whole game. I also wanted to put some coins and a character selector, but ended up only implementing the coins due to a lack of time. I had some more ideas like a better level spawner and the coin chest that I wasn't able to implement either. The last thing I did before passing the game on was to add some sound effects for consuming enemies, picking up coins and for the new sanity kit and the sanity circle.
Hey, if you don't know me, I'm Aya, and I don't enjoy being scared, so I typically avoid anything horror-related. But for the greater good, I braved through and found the courage to click play and test this game. And actually, it was pretty fun for being so early in the cycle. I've only made one spoopy game before called Pixel Labs, which if you're curious, you can play on itch. So I'm by no means an expert at this. But a common thread for horror games seems to be immersion. As a player, you've got to feel like you're in your character's shoes. And while sometimes I do feel like this cute marshmallow, I thought a more literal art theme could help with that. Using what I received as inspiration, I developed a story and art I thought might be a little more relatable. The player is a patient in a hospital. They wake up to pitch black and find some catastrophic event has happened. They need to explore the hospital while battling their mental state, which is constantly fading between the real world and an alternate one. I thought the art was a big part of conveying this story, so I worked on that and tried to give it a grungy theme. I have no clue what style this is, but if you want to use these in your own project, I made a sprite sheet you can get for free at Ayadev on itch. In the first handful of my playtest, my highest scores were when I stared at the walls and didn't do anything. To encourage the player to explore, I added quarters, keys, and batteries that can be found around the hospital. I also converted the sanity kit to pills. Instead of simply having a consume ability with a timer, you now also need to have pills. I also added a UI that shows how many of each item the player has collected. The vision of the player was a really cool effect, but I felt like it was a bit backwards. My thought is things tend to get more exciting in horror games when you see less, not more. So I modified the vision of the player into a flashlight. The flashlight batteries drain over time and your light dims, so you need to find new batteries to replace them. You can turn off your flashlight to save battery, but then of course you won't be able to see anything. I also added this little notification that shows how the controls work. To keep the cool spooky floor effect, I added a fade to the floor material that is linked to the player's sanity. If I had more time, I would have added a vending machine where quarters could be spent for items and upgrades, an electrical room where emergency lights could be activated for a period of time, some locked doors, and ways to save other patients, but I'm out of time, so we'll have to see how the last two devs decide to finish the game. See ya! Hey, I'm Fibian. I've always loved horror. From Phasmophobia to Five Nights at Freddy's, horror games intrigue me and inspire me with the rich and emotionally manipulative environments they create. And when I received the project, I was pleasantly surprised to find a mostly cohesive horror experience. I played through the game a few times and then started checking out the code behind it. I noticed that a few features such as keys and coins had no functionality yet. Write this down, it'll be important later. I also found some bugs here and there such as rounding errors that I went ahead and fixed. After getting acquainted with the game, however, I noticed a key issue that was keeping me from feeling engaged. Immersion. I had no connection with this character, so I wasn't feeling like I was in their shoes, and so I did not find the game scary. So firstly, I set out to fix that. I wrote a complete story for the game based around the notes littering the starting area. The story was designed in such a way so that it tied in with the setting and the mechanics so I wouldn't have to change anything from the previous developers. Next, I recorded voice lines in Ableton Live for the character reading the notes to add to the creepy atmosphere. With a couple layers of audio effects, I was able to get it to sound like this. I need to find the circle. Or this. <laughs> then I switched my focus to the unfinished features, the coins and keys. While keys seemed to have an obvious solution, being that they unlock doors, no matter how much I thought about it, I couldn't see coins fitting into this game. So I ended up removing coins and making it so that you could use keys to unlock certain doors. My plan for the starting area was to make the main rooms on the right the most important. They'd each be locked behind a key and lead to some notes with lore and clues. Then the final room has the information the player needs in order to win. Since the game was pretty dark, I dotted these lights around the doors for slightly better visibility. With the lore notes implemented and functional, and the doors unlockable, it was time to add an ending to the game. I created a sort of endgame mode where the objectives change from discovering, exploring, and collecting to a primary objective involving these blue dots and the sanity circles. Upon collecting three of them, the player wins with a fitting end that I'm not going to spoil. But with that, my time is just about up, so I'm gonna hand it off to Noah. So it took me quite a while to understand what the heck was going on. There was what felt like hundreds of enemies all around me, and my character was losing sanity at the speed of light. The enemies were just a bunch of circles, so I created some artwork for them, but still I didn't feel much tension. I think this was because there were too many dangers all at once, all the time, so this didn't leave any room for the player to feel rising tension or fear. So I made the drastic decision of removing the weird floating heads, and began creating a single monstrous entity I named Centipede. 
This freak of nature would stalk you around the abandoned facility and your goal would be to survive and ultimately slaughter it while maintaining sanity and managing your extremely limited pile of resources. Equipped with a crossbow, the player catches sinister glimpses of the many-legged horror and he gets a chance he can attack it. Sound effects were key to add great atmosphere to this small experience. The player loses sanity whenever he deals damage to the beast, its blood-curdling scream chilling the soul and sending the player frantically searching for pills to restore some peace of mind. The torch quickly loses battery, the less light there is, the quicker you turn insane. Sadly, I then realized that the story the other devs had concocted had to be scratched because it no longer fit with my centipedes. <laughs> So I had to write a different one and scatter spooky clues and environmental storytelling elements within the map. You can play the centipede using the link in the description. And again, guys, if you want to learn how to make your very own incredible video games, we're making a course called the Game Dev Rockets. We're going to take you on this incredible journey from having zero skills to selling your work and earning money with your games. You can learn more about it with the link in the description. And if you liked this seventh edition of the Pass the Game Challenge, hit like and subscribe for the upcoming VR edition and 100 devs make a game without communicating. Some insane collaborations are coming up, guys. All right, cheers.